This is Mr. Melendez, and I'll be performing a read aloud of the Plantation versus Factory Worksheet. In the worksheet, you have two documents, one from the Thorn Island Plantation, and the other document is from the Lewiston Mills. I will be reading both of them, so that way, as you are listening to this video, you'll be able to read it along, and hopefully what this will do will extend your comprehension of the text. So let's go ahead and start. Directions. Read the documents below about rules and, and directions that were left for an overseer that worked on the Thorn Island Plantation and the Lewiston Mills. Use the information below to help you fill out the worksheet that compares the plantation and the Lewiston Mills. Rules and directions for my Thorn Island Plantation by which my overseers are to govern themselves in the management of it. Parentheses. The directions in this book are to be strictly attended to. Number one. The allowance for every grown Negro, however old and good for nothing, and every young one that works in the field gets a small amount of corn each week and a pint of salt and a piece of meat, no more than 14 pounds per month. Number two. The sucking children, babies, and all other small ones toddlers who do not work in the field get half the amount of corn and salt. Number three, no Negro to have more than 50 lashes for any offense, no matter how great the crime. Number four, you will give tickets, passes, to any of the Negroes who apply for them to go anywhere about the neighborhood, but do not allow them to go off it without one, nor allow any strange Negroes to come on the plantation without a pass. Number five, no night meeting and preaching to be allowed on the place except on Saturday night and Sunday morn. Six, Elsie is the doctoress of the plantation. In case of extraordinary illness, when she thinks she can do no more for the sick, you will get a doctor. Number seven, the Negro's measures for shoes to be sent down with the name written on each, sent to me early in October. All Negroes get shoes except the children and those that nurse them. Number eight, when a beef is killed, the fifth quarter except the hide to be given to Elsie for the children. Number nine, my Negroes are not allowed to plant cotton for themselves. Everything else they may plant and you will give them tickets, passes to sell what they make. Number 10, I leave my plantation shotgun with you. Now I'm going to scroll down and look at the Lewiston Mills rules and regulations. So regulations to be observed by all persons employed in the Lewiston Mills. Number one, the overseer are required to be in their rooms at the start of the mills working hours. They are to see that all those employed under them are at their places. Overseers may grant a leave of absence as long as it doesn't stop the machinery. Number two, all persons employed in the Lewiston Mills are required to observe all regulations of the rooms they work in. These persons are not allowed to be absent without the permission of the overseer, except in the cases of sickness. They are required to send the overseer word of the cause of their, on their absence. Number three, all persons employed in the Lewiston Mills, except minors under the age 16 years old, agree to labor each day, as the company requires not to exceed 11 hours each day. Number four, all person who gain employment by Lewiston Mills must register the name in a book kept in the counting room for the purpose of record keeping. Number five, no one who knowingly drink alcohol will be employed by the Lewiston Mills. Number six, all employees working for Lewiston Mills are requested to attend public worship on the Sabbath, holy day of worship. Number seven, any person intending to leave employment from the Lewiston Mills will be required to give at least two weeks notice and continue to work until the end of that notice. Any person leaving before the end of this notice will not be entitled to pay. Number eight, any person who take from the mill or any property belonging to the mill will be considered stealing and prosecuted according to the law. Number nine, 
sewing, reading, knitting, and etc. are not allowed during working hours. When you go to the third page of the worksheet, you will see that there's a graphic organizer or a table where you have labeled characteristics, plantation, and factory. In the column of the characteristics, you're going to see these prompts. According to the prompts, we will fill the information inside for plantation and factory. Let's read the prompts. The system of rewards and punishments. For the plantation, list what kind of rewards or punishment they would receive if they didn't complete their work. Same for the factory. Working conditions. What kind of working conditions did they have in the plantation or in the factory? Means of controls and supervision. How did the overseer control or supervise workers either on the plantation or in the factory? Provisions for the care of the workers. If the workers became sick or got hurt while working, how did the overseers take care of them either on the plantation or the factory? The freedoms or restrictions placed on the workers. Did the workers on the plantation or the factory, did they have certain freedoms or what could they do or could not do? And the last one, do these rules tell us about the values and morals of the people that were in charge? Tell me what you think. Are these people uh, moral people? Are they good people or are they bad people and why? Why do you think that? Write your answers for each, the plantation and the factory. This is the end of the read aloud. Go ahead and pause, rewind, fast forward, and listen to this as many times as you need in order to help you fill out the worksheet. This is Mr. Melendez, and this is the end of the read aloud. Have a good day.